Hi there everyone, so for those of you that don't know me, my name's Ben Pearson and I've been nominated by Andrew Cox to do the next instalment of the Top Table Gaming Hobby Vlog. Thanks for that Andrew. So my plan was for this just to do uh, small clips every day showing you what I get up to during the week hobby wise, but unfortunately I've just not had time because of work commitments. So instead I thought I'd show you what I'm up to this weekend. I've just been down to my local games workshop and picked up the new painting accessories, the spray stick handle and the new paint pot holders. So I thought we could maybe do a small unboxing of those, a uh, small review of them. Um, I've got a few models to build and paint this weekend as well, so I thought I'd do a small unboxing video of that for you, and then maybe we could do a painting video, showing you how I'm painting my space walls up at the moment. Um, but before that, uh, I think it's probably best if I show you my uh, current collection and what I'm working on. So, one sec, and we'll show you what I've uh, got in my display cabinet. Alright guys, so this is my display cabinet. So on the top shelf here we've got part of my army to Lord of the Rings. So just over here we've got my army of Farharad. Uh, now this has all been painted with contrast, which is really fun to do and uh, was really quick. So we've got the Mummock War Leader just over here and a second Mummock just over here. Uh, I've added a few things to this Mummock, like the Tuss weapons on the side out of cocktail sticks and a bit of um, thread. And then we've got the cocktail sticks in the side uh, to look sort of like arrows, um, and then the Mahud Warriors and Warriors of Harad just behind them, so I'm working on this at the moment mostly with contrast, which is uh, quite fun um, to do really. Um, and then next to them over here we've got the uh, Iron Hills, so I painted these for Ardacon. Um, just at the back there we've got the Iron Hills Chariot, which was uh, a really fun kit to build and paint. I did that in, I think, two days uh, whilst watching the extended movies of The Hobbit. Um, so that was a really fun project to do very quickly. Um, and then just a mix of Warriors and Dane and a few other things now. Um, just the Champions of Erebor really left to paint and Bilbo Baggins. Um, then moving on down, uh, we've got the rest of my Lord of the Rings. So Mordor over here, which is mostly unpainted for the moment, I need to get on this, uh, but I just haven't had time. Um, and over here we've got my Gondor army, so this is just things I've collected on eBay over the past couple of years. I've not really got around to painting any of it or playing with it really, uh, but I'm definitely looking to start work on this properly uh, soon. Uh, just next to those I've got the uh, Lake Town army, which is practically all painted now, uh, Gandalf back there. Um, and then Hilda and Percy left to paint and build. Um, but I painted this entire army in uh, about three days for the Desolation of Stockport event um, with, uh, 2017, which was uh, quite a challenge, um, but definitely worth it and definitely fun. Um, then moving on down, we've got my uh, 40k armies now. So Space Wolves is probably my, my biggest 40k project. Um, I just love the Space Wolf lore and... Uh, the models. So over here we've got my Fire Raptor gunship. Um, painted that in about a full day, which was uh, a really fun project to build and paint. And then we've just got a mix of different things over here, which I'm looking to paint up for the um, tournament coming up soon at Element Games, um, Assault on Element, which uh, will hopefully be a really fun event. Um, I like to use the Horace Heresy style 30k miniatures, so I've got uh, some of the Mark III plastic space marines and the older style uh, Rhino variants over there. So looking to do an unboxing of one of those variants and um, a building video with you and then some painting of these Mark III marines and some painting of these uh, 30k marines as well. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, painting ones down here which I'll just show you a bit closer. Um, so I started painting these around Christmas time last year. Um, I really like the aesthetic of the 30k Space Marines, especially the Mark III armour. I think it uh, goes uh, quite well with the um, Space Wolf lore. Uh, and I, lo I love listening to the 30k um, novels um, and audio books. So these are really fun to paint. Um, and we'll do a small video showing you the method I uh, use to paint some of these up. Um, and then at the bottom over here, um, we've just got a mix of some of the unfinished armies, which I've got really. So uh, some of my favourite uh, 40k miniatures here are the uh, Death Corps of Krieg, which I got off Forge World uh, about three years ago now. Uh, unfortunately, I've not got around to painting them, but um, they're really great looking models. Um, we've got a few tanks uh, at the back, but that's my uh, display cabinet. So... 
hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this as much as I'm going to enjoy uh, filming it and let's get on to some uh, reviews, painting and building. Alright everyone, so as promised earlier I'm going to do a little unboxing and building video uh, of the Mark 1C Rhino for a forge wheel that I showed you in my cabinet earlier on. I'm building this for the Assault on Element tournament uh, at the end of November, so if there's anybody in the group that plays 40k and uh, wants a chilled out, relaxed tournament, you should definitely check it out. Because this model's from Forge World, it does contain quite a lot of resin parts, and for those of you that may not know, uh, you do need to wash these parts with warm and soapy water. I've already done this. Um, I find the quickest way of doing it is to scrub each piece with an old toothbrush and some uh, dish soap. So with this kit you get the uh, normal Rhino kit and a lot of extra resin pieces as well. So I'll just pull out some of the resin pieces now. So you've got the extra doors, extra side panels, a uh, dozer blade at the front and uh, just some extra vents and escape hatches and uh, bolter guns which make the model, uh, model really stand out from the normal Rhino kit. So I'm going to start building the plastic pair part of the Rhino now, the first half, and once I'm done with that I'll get back to you and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the video. So I've assembled the majority of the plastic parts of the model now. Generally you just build the main framework of the Rhino without the side panels uh, on the front, uh, or the tracks to start with. Uh, the rest is generally all resin. So you've got the two side panels there as you can probably see. And then it comes with the side door hatches, the exhaust vents on the side, and some extra little escape hatches and turret rings, as you can just about see there. So I've prepped all this uh, resin now and, and I'm going to get on to building the second part of the model so I'll get back to you soon. Um, Alright guys, I'll come back uh, just for a minute. So we're about halfway through building the resin sections of the model now. Um, now just a couple of tips and tricks which I've picked up uh, whilst building forge build models. As you can probably see there you've got quite a, I've got quite a big gap in between the uh, resin and the plastic. Now Sometimes because resin's malleable, the it warps slightly whilst it's in the packaging. So the best way I find to kind of fix this is if you use a hairdryer. You can heat the resin up and bend it back into place. And uh, if you hold it there until it cools down, it generally stay in that position. So you can reset the uh, resin as it is uh, to get a much stronger bond and uh, make things uh, fit together a lot better. Um, also, when you get certain pieces of the uh, resin that just won't stick to the plastic, um, water can a little bit of water can really help speed up the drying process of the glue, so uh, super glue. So, just a couple of tips and tricks there for when you're building. All right, everyone. So I've just about assembled all the resin sections of the model now, so it's all pretty much together. Um, I've only got the dozer blade left to fit onto the front now. But uh, I need to put the tracks in first before I put that on, or otherwise it'll be in the way. I've also got a few extra of the plastic bits to stick onto the model, like the smoke launchers, the searchlights, and some of the um, radios and things like that. So, yeah, there you have it, all the resin sections. Um, it's gone together really quickly. Uh, it's a really quite fun kit to build, and everything fits together very nicely. The only somewhat tricky bit are the side panels, which... Can sometimes be a bit tricky to put onto the model but overall it's a really fun kit to build so I'll put on the dozer blade and the tracks and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Finished off the model now um, I've got the dozer blade attached and all the tracks down the bottom and I've also uh, added on um, the smoke launchers, the uh, lights at the front and a little radio at the back as well this uh, model went together really quickly and it's um, really fun to build. If any of you are looking really to get any forge wheel models, uh, start forge wheel models, uh, particularly if you collect Space Marines, then this is a really good kit to start with. It's not got too many resin pieces 
and it goes together really well so it's a great way just to start if you're new to forge world or resin models but yeah it's been fun to build i hope you've enjoyed watching it um next we'll go on to some painting the space wolves and i hope that i can give you some tips or tricks i'm not the best painter in the world but hopefully you'll learn a couple of things maybe all right see you soon guys Hi everyone, so the weather's a lot better today. I'm going to do a small review, as I said earlier, on the new spray stick handle from Games Workshop. Now in the kit you get the spray stick and the handle, which uh, you need to attach separately, but it's really easy to go in. There's a little clip, you might just be able to see at the bottom there, which you just need to push in to put the handle in and take it back out. Now, you also get 50 of the elastic bands, so that you can secure your models to it. Um, I've got quite a lot on here. I've got five of the 40mm bases and one of the Dreadnought size bases, but there is probably enough room to get the smaller bases, uh, probably about two on each side here for each 40mm base, so you can really get quite a lot onto it. And they're really quite secure as you can probably see. So unfortunately I can't really show you how I'm going to use it whilst I'm spraying because I'm using my phone to record, but I'm going to go and uh, spray these models now and come back and um, give you my thoughts and a little bit of a review. Alright everyone, so as you can see I've just uh, finished spraying all the models. It's uh, been able to get me really good coverage and one thing I noticed whilst I was using this that I really liked was that you can put the handle, as you might just be able to see there, into both sides of the spray stick which allows you to get really good coverage and you can spray one side of the models and then spray the other side. And it's just been really secure and allowed me to use quite a lot less spray than I would normally if I was spraying on something else other than uh, on a normal surface. So I definitely try, if you're spraying a lot of models, I'd definitely take a look at some of these because it's worked really well for me and it's allowed me to use a lot less spray than I would normally. So yeah, um, overall a really great uh, product. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is a small review of the the small tutorial of some of the painting I'm doing uh, and then that's about it. Alright guys, I hope you're enjoying it. So the last section of this video is going to be a small painting tutorial sort of thing. Um, I'm going to show you the space walls that I showed earlier in the display cabinet. So I'm mainly just going to show you how to do the main armour and the golden trim on these and not the other stuff as I don't really have time. But if any of you are interested then I might look at doing another video later on uh, showing you how I do the full miniature. So I start off painting this with a base coat of the Fang. Now this isn't produced anymore in a spray paint version so you can um, spray paint your model black and then paint over the top with uh, the Fang. And then what I want to do next is an all over coat of rust grey. So for this I'm using the large base brush and once I'm done I'll come back and show you what it should look like. So I've done the first coat of rust grey now as you can probably just about make out there. So always make sure when you're doing base coats particularly and any other paints that you thin them down with a little bit of water so I've put uh, a little bit of rust grey on here and then thinned it down with water um, but you want this coat to go pretty much over all the armour and over the back of the chainsaw at the back and the backpack so don't worry about leaving any uh, the recesses and the original the fang colour because what we're going to do now is move on to some shading so I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade but you can use Null Oil as well and what we're going to do is use a small glaze brush just to paint in some ink into the recesses and corners to add some um, shading to it so I'll come back to you when I'm done and show you how I'm doing it thanks guys so I've added on the highlights now and the shading in the corners as you can probably just about make out there in that shoulder pad. You want to make sure during this step you go in over all the creases and folds and all the uh, recessed areas of the model, particularly at the back with these Mark III Space Marines here. Now I'm using, I was using a smaller base brush for this uh, because I wanted a lot of control over the, the shade whilst I was using it. But if you do make some mistakes, you add a bit too much ink, then it's um, really easy to come back with a little bit of Ross Gray and just uh, highlight that up and uh, tidy that up. So the next step we're going to use is Fenrisian Gray, just to add some highlights 
again with a small base brush or a shade brush just to get some really to get some highlighting on the edge of the model so here's another model that I've been painting up recently so as you can probably see just in the uh, on the raised areas of the grooved leg plates there I've put some Fenrisian grey and on the if it'll focus on the chainsaw just about there some highlights so you want to get those on all the raised areas where the light is going to hit the model now if you put a bit too much on or you uh, have a mistake whilst you're doing it then just come back with a bit of uh, rust grey just to tidy that up and make it look better so the next step is moving on to the golden areas um, of the armour here the all the raised areas particularly around the shoulder pads and just around the legs here so for this I'm using Balthazar Gold now I'm using a small base brush again and making sure that I water down the paint before I'm applying it uh, because the gold is a bit of a difficult colour to get on it does need, need uh, maybe two to three coats of paint to get a good solid base colour after that I'm using some Orikama Gold just to highlight it up and make it stand out um, which will end up looking like that and that's generally how I'm painting up the armour and the raised areas of the shoulder pads um, as I said before if you want to see how I'm completing the whole model I'll look at doing a bigger, vi a bigger video um, later on but I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing how I'm painting them up Thanks. All right, everyone, so I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I was hoping to do a bit lo little bit longer on the painting tutorial, but the video was just going to become too long. Um, if any of you are interested in learning a bit more about how I'm painting them up or want to see how I'm doing it, then uh, give me a shout and I can maybe start doing another longer video showing you how I'm doing the whole miniature. Um, but I've had a whole lot of fun making this. I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching it. The next person uh, that I've nominated to do the next uh, instalment of the top table vlog is Gaz Baller, so hopefully you have as much fun as I've done making a video. Alright, thanks everyone.